Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello learners, welcome to session 2 of training and development. Today in this lecture, we will delve into the realms of the need for training assessment. We will be covering a few topics in this lecture. The first being understanding the necessity for need assessment, then we will move to methods and tools for identifying the training needs and also we will try to focus on some important case studies that is, that is going to gain us an insight into the effective ways of need assessments. So, let us get started. Now, the question which arises is what is training need assessment and why do we need training need assessment? So, let me just brief you about what is meant by the term training need assessment. So, basically this is the term which is the first step in the process of training. It is an important step in the process of training and it means that before we begin to develop the training program, it is important to understand that whether do we need training to cater to the requirements of people or not? Whether the training would be needed or it is not needed. First of all, it is important to see that if people have an innate need to be trained on certain aspects. So, it is a very, very rigorous process to understand the need for training. And this is the first step towards the training and development process. So, why is there a need for training assessment or training need assessment? The very first reason for it is changing business environment. The organizations operate in a very, very dynamic environment where technological advancements, market trends and regulatory changes are happening every now and then. To adapt to these changes, employees need to acquire new set of skills. They need new knowledge to be assimilated. TNA helps them identify the emerging needs and ensures that employees are equipped to handle evolving challenges. So, TNA is something that identifies emerging skills requirements to adapt to changing business landscape. Then the second reason is performance gaps. The second need is performance gaps. So, organizations may experience a lot of performance discrepancies or what you call as performance gap. So, performance gap actually refers to the gap which exists between the actual performance and the desired performance. So, training need assessments would help us pinpoint the various areas where the individuals fall short of expected standards of or targets. So, TNA helps us to understand the root causes of these gaps, whether they are in the form of lack of skills, knowledge or other factors that develop targeted training interventions to address them. So, so as to develop the targeted training interventions to develop them, it is first of all important to understand the pain areas. It is important to highlight the various uh, areas that employees fall short of. So, this is what we may mean by the term performance gap. There is employee development. Investing in employees is crucial for fostering a culture and fostering a skilled and motivated workforce. So, TNA definitely helps us in identifying those areas where employees can improve their skills and competencies
leading to both personal and professional growth of the employees. So, this not only benefits the individual employees, but also helps in enhancing the organizational capabilities in terms of better skills, in terms of better knowledge set, in terms of better ability set that it has. Next is about strategic alignment. So, training need assessment ensures the training efforts are completely in line with the organizational goals and strategies. By identifying the knowledge, skills, abilities needed to achieve the strategic goals, organizations can prioritize training initiatives that have the greatest impact on the performance and competitiveness. So, many of the organizations are following this practice of taking up the task of training need assessment before developing the training programs. So, as to understand what all factors impact the performance and competitiveness, so that the focus areas of improving the training effectiveness can be really worked upon. So, this is what we mean by strategic alignment. Next is resource optimization. So, it is about allocating the resources judiciously by prioritizing the training needs. So, resources such as time, budget, employees working in the organizations are limited and the organizations must try their level best to use them judiciously. So, training need assessments or training need analysis helps them prioritize the training needs based on their importance and feasibility, ensuring that the resources are invested where they should be and where they will yield the maximum returns. Next is employee engagement and retention, providing opportunities, adequate opportunities for learning and development is a key driver of employees development and uh, it is something which is directly related to employee engagement and retention. So, it has been seen that training has a direct import, you know, impact on engagement of the employees at work and also the higher employee retention rate. So, basically, if you are providing adequate training opportunities, developmental opportunities to your employees, there is a likelihood that they would retain in the organization and they would be more engaged than otherwise. So, it enhances the employee engagement by investing in learning and development and it promotes the retention by providing adequate opportunities for career growth and advancement. In the era of today, people are more interested in taking the strategic control of their career. So, definitely as a consequence of it, the career opportunities, the career growth and career developments are the top priorities of the individuals and training and development satisfies it all. So, understanding what would put them to work, what kind of training uh, need do they have, what kind of uh, retention strategies can be followed in terms of uh, the career advancements, career development opportunities to the people, the training opportunities to the people would all serve the purpose. So, employees are more likely to stay with the organization that invest in their growth and provide opportunities for advancements to their employees. Next is compliance and risk management. In the regulatory industries, in the regulated industries, compliance with legal and regulatory requirement is essential to provide the smooth surface for the individuals to operate and to avoid any kind of penalties and mitigate the risks. So, TNA helps ensure that employees receive training on relevant laws, regulations, industry standards, thereby reducing the organization's exposure to the compliance related risks. Then is about 
innovation and creativity. So, training can definitely stimulate and foster a culture of innovation and creativity by exposing employees to new ideas, giving them new perspectives and of course, changing the way in which the individuals think. So, training need assessments or training need analysis helps identify the training needs that promote innovation such as creative problem solving, collaborations, design thinking, enhancing the ability of the individuals to you know use more of critical thinking approaches at work. Now, let me just surprise you of certain important aspects of training need analysis. So, in, when we talk about training need analysis, there are three important analysis that actually happen as a part of training need analysis. The very first being the organizational analysis, the second being job analysis and last but not the least we have individual analysis. So, today we are going to discuss all three, these three aspects of training need analysis in detail. So, starting with organizational analysis, I would like to first of all tell you about what organizational analysis really mean and then we would focus on what should organizational analysis assess. After that, we will be moving to several other techniques of understanding the organizational analysis in a better manner. So, organizational analysis examines the broader context within which the training will take place. It involves assessing the organizational goals, strategies, culture, structure, resources and constraints to determine how training aligns with organizational objectives. Now, when it comes to organizational analysis, there are several important aspects such as environmental impact, state of economy, changing workforce demographics, changing technology and automation, increasing global world uh, marketplaces, political trends such as maybe sexual harassment and workplace violence, organizational goals, resource availability, etc., which are having a bearing on the organization. So, we are going to discuss all these aspects in detail as a part of organizational analysis. Now, let us consider a case, a case of a manufacturing company which is operating in an industry which is subject to very, very stringent and strict environmental regulations. The introduction of new emission standards require the companies to invest in upgraded equipments to reduce the pollution levels. So, the organization thinks on these lines and they decide to go for understanding first of all what is the need of the hour. Do we really need to train our individuals on the new trends on the new environmental regulations? So, the clear cut answer to the question is yes because it is a mandatory thing and it is definitely going to impact the organization as a whole. So, organization analysis uh, as a part of organization analysis for training need analysis, the organization decides to go for the env environment impact analysis and uh, subsequently found that the employees need to be trained on certain aspects of environmental regulations. So, this was about environmental uh, you know, impacts. Then organization analysis should also be focusing on changing workforce demographics. It should be focusing on state of economy. Now, let us first of all talk about the state of economy and then we will move to changing workforce demographics. So, let us again talk of an example here about an organization, a retail chain which is facing increased operating costs due to rising inflation and supply chain disruptions. So, as a result the company 
explores alternative sourcing strategies and implements cost saving measures such as energy efficient lighting to reduce overhead expense expenses. Moreover, the organization thinks on the lines of training their employees on how to use these energy efficient mechanisms or energy efficient you know practices at place. So, it decides to you know it might decide to uh, impart a good training program for its employees. The third thing can be related to the organization, organizations changing workforce demographics. So, these days we can see more women participation in the workforce. We can see the demographics of uh, changing, uh, you know, the demographics of employees working in the organizations is changing at a very, very rapid pace. So, there is more of, uh, you know, women participation, there is more recognition to different kinds of uh, workforce in the organization. So, demographic patterns are changing within the workforce. So, it is very important for us to address this issue also and to see what would be the requirement of the people. For example, uh, the organizations might have to address the needs pertaining to cultural and language barriers because maybe we have more of uh, such workforce working in the organization which is more of diverse in nature and in the era of diversity and inclusion, you know, we may have to give some kind of inclusivity training for our employees or we may have to think on the lines of developing some kind of programs related to diversity also. So, there can be different aspects which may have to be catered to. Now, it is about changing technology and automation. For example, a new technology comes in and there is some kind of automation uh, which happens because of which the individuals who are not very well equipped with the latest technology may have to be trained on certain latest technologies, may have to be trained on certain latest softwares which are to be used in course of operating in the organizations. So, definitely at different points of time we have to do a lot of organizational analysis, a lot of environmental analysis to understand what all areas do we need the training of the employees for. So, another thing could be increasing global and world marketplaces. So, when we talk about increasing global world marketplaces, the example in this context could be a software development firm expands its customer base by offering its products and services in international markets. So, it has to be very, very uh, well versed with understanding what would be the market preferences of people, right. And also, it is important for them to fully equip their sales force with the new trends, the emerging market trends and the consumer behavior associated with their uh, you know customers. So, it is important to take care of these aspects and therefore, increasing global world marketplaces like things could also come into play organization might have to think on some such things and they may have to train their employees adequately. Then uh, several other things are there for example, political trends such as sexual harassment and workplace violence regarding which again the organization might have to think on the lines of developing a very, very important training program for their employees and then may act accordingly, right. So, in nutshell we may say that when it comes to organizational analysis, it is something which entails something in broader perspective, wherein all the micro and macro environmental factors are taken into consideration. And then after that, after fully assessing the various requirements of the organization arising from within the organization or from various factors which have a bearing on organization would have to be taken care of. Now, the next aspect is task analysis. Now, when it comes to task analysis, it is a systematic process, it is a very, very systematic process which is used to gather information about the tasks, the activities and responsibilities 
associated with a particular job or group of jobs. It identifies several aspects such as the knowledge, the skills, abilities, attitudes required to perform job in an optimal manner. So, here, here is how various sources can be used in the job analysis. Now, let us talk about each of the constituents of task analysis assessment in detail. Now, the very first thing here is job analysis and for the job analysis what really is important is job description. Now, what is job description? Job description is the study of the various duties and responsibilities associated with the job. So, in order to do appropriate task analysis, it is important to understand in detail the various duties and responsibilities associated with a particular job. For example, a retail company you know which is conducting a task analysis for this role of sales associate. The job description here would outline the primary responsibilities and the primary responsibilities of a sales associate would entail various things such as assisting the customers. processing the transactions, maintaining maintaining store cleanliness and this provides foundational information for identifying the tasks and skills which are required to do the job. So, a job description is all about understanding the various job duties and responsibilities associated with a job. So, similarly for various jobs which are existing in the organization, for various duty uh, you know for various jobs which are existing in the organization, the organization may figure out the various job analysis uh, for different jobs. So, in nutshell it is important to identify the various areas where the performance discrepancies might happen or the areas which need adequate attention. So, next is about KSA analysis. So, when you talk about KSA analysis it is nothing else but the same knowledge, skills, abilities and attitudes of the individuals. So, in the same retail example that we took in the same example that we took in which there was a retail company which decides to do some kind of uh, job description or try to try to figure out the duties and responsibilities associated with the, the various jobs in the organization. You know in the same retail company a KSA analysis would identify the specific knowledge now, the specific knowledge here would pertain to the maybe the product that an individual is dealing with. It may be something related to the product knowledge. Then there can be several aspects such as sales techniques which are to be followed by the organization. Similarly, if you talk about skills for the employees who are working in the organization may include skills related to customer services and something related to cash handling within the organization, attitude might entail the positive attitude 
and ability to work in teams. That is the teamwork attitude in the organization. So, when we perform the knowledge, skills and ability analysis, that is the KSA analysis, it is important to understand that in context of a specific job that we are dealing with, we have to figure out the various aspects of knowledge, skills and attitude. In this, in, in this example, we talked about the product knowledge, the sales techniques which may be followed to boost the sales of the organization. Then is about the skills of the people which might include some kind of uh, identification pertaining to customer service or the approach which needs to be followed for customer service and uh, maybe the cash handling. Then attitude may entail something related to positive attitude, teamwork within the organization. So, this way you know if we bifurcate the knowledge, skills and abilities associated with different jobs of the organization. For example, there are 15 different positions of the organization. So, for 15 different positions we need to identify the knowledge, skills and abilities of the individuals who are to work for a particular job position in the organization. So, it is independent of the individual who is working in the organization rather it is uh, something related to uh, the knowledge, skills and abilities which are to be possessed by individuals uh, in general for occupying that particular position in the organization or you may say it has to be clearly aligned with the job role that individual has to follow. Then is about performance standard. So, let us talk, talk about this example again. The company which is a retail concern, it established certain performance standards for its sales associates. Now, what, what can they include? They include several, they may include several metrics. And these metrics may be in terms of the sales targets. So, the organization may give some kind of sales targets to its employees. It may give some kind of customer service scores or customer satisfaction scores to its employees and may also give some kind of performance standards in terms of productivity goals. So, task analysis involves aligning the identified tasks and skills with these, with these performance standards to ensure they meet the organizational expectations in the best possible manner. So, these are about uh, the performance metrics. So, as a part of task analysis, we would have to take up the responsibility of understanding the various performance standards. So, if the people are told well in advance, I mean if the organization already has some kind of performance standard in place, those things would be reviewed as a part of task analysis. Then as observation of job or sampling the work. So, as a part of task analysis, we may have to think on the lines of doing some kind of observation at work and uh, observation of work also and to sample the work to see if everything is happening as per the standards which are set for the individuals who are operating. right? So, taking for, forward the same example, the training manager spends time observing sales associates in action such as they might observe how they are interacting with the customers, how they are interacting with their customer, are they able to give some kind of resolve to their customers or not in case of some kind of um, you know service failure, what mechanism is being adopted by the individual to go for maybe uh, service recovery. So, what all service recovery mechanisms do we have in place? Do we have them or we do not have this them in place? All these things will be taken up as a part of task analysis. Then it is about performing the job. So, as a part of task analysis, a new you know hands on experience allows uh, training them adequately and uh, get a better knowledge about how to perform the job. Uh, how the job role is supposed to be uh, delivered, all these things will form a part of 
the task analysis. Now a lot of information pertaining to job analysis or task analysis can be fetched by doing some kind of literature review. It is an interesting thing in itself. So, reviewing the literature about the job would essentially mean researching the best practices. It is about understanding the best practices which may be employed from the other organization. And uh, definitely for this purpose, we may review professional journals, we may look for various articles, we may look for n number of secondary sources which are into play to understand the literature about the job and to replicate some of the best practices in the organizations. Then asking jobs, job related questions from the incumbents, from the supervisors, from the peers, from uh, the colleagues of the individuals, from the customers at times, from the upper management as well. All these things will again form part of job analysis or task analysis rather. So, there are several other issues which might uh, happen in the organization pertaining to the downtime. Then uh, there can be several issues which might come as a consequence of uh, the wastage which is happening, the repairs that happen, the re late deliveries, quality control. So, all these things have to be taken very well care of as a part of task analysis. Now, what would this job analysis include? It would include several things such as what is the job, where to collect the data from, who to ask, how many to ask, who should select the incumbents, how to select the incumbents, what to ask about. So, we will be talking about all these aspects. So, since we are talking about job analysis or task analysis, so it is important to answer this question. So, what is the job would entail a comprehensive understanding of the various responsibilities, tasks, duties uh, associated with a particular job role. It involves identifying the core functions and expectations of the position within the organizational context. Now, where to collect the data? Data can be collected through various sources. Now, some of the sources can be your job description. So, when you have done your job description in a thorough manner, the data can be fetched from there. Then one of the others, uh, you know, one of the sources uh, for the same could be performance evaluations that happen. Then we may even collect data from uh, the organizational analysis which happen, uh, you know, the uh, policies uh, and procedures of the organization, etc. So, this is how the data can be collected in this context. And the next question is whom to ask. So, there are various stakeholders associated with the job. So, stakeholders can be the right people to provide us adequate and important valuable insights pertaining to the job. In this connection, the current incumbents of the job, the supervisors, the subordinates, the managers, the HR professionals and uh, maybe some experts who are working from outside the organization can be instrumental in figuring out the things associated with the job and can be very, very fruitful in giving us the outcome of job analysis. Now, who should select incumbents? The selection of incumbents from data collection depends on the objective of job analysis. So, typically individuals who are currently performing the job may be really instrumental in collecting the uh, job related data. Then some of the HR professionals, the supervisors and uh, the managers may be involved in identifying the suitable candidates for participation. So, if for example, we need some kind of external validation or we are looking for some kind of external uh, stakeholders who can be beneficial for providing the data related to task analysis, those people can also be employed adequately to conduct the job analysis. Now, how many to ask? The number of incumbents would definitely depend upon the job analysis uh, factors such as size of the organization, the complexity involved in the job, the incumbents uh, who are uh, working in the organization, the diverse group of incumbents who are working in the organization, so on and so forth. So, this is how you are going to uh, you know decide on the 
number of people who may be contacted, number of people who may be asked to do the job analysis. How to select would again vary like for example, we may have several methods like random sampling methods can be there, then there can be stratified sampling method, then there can be some kind of purposive sampling methods, we may, uh, we may you know do such, such kind of uh, thing even by directly approaching the people as per our convenience. So, all these things can be really helpful in collecting the information pertaining to the job analysis. Now, next question is what to ask about? There are two approaches, one is the work oriented approach and another one is task oriented approach. So, let us talk about the workers oriented approach. Now, this approach focuses on understanding the characteristics attributes and behaviors of the individuals who would be performing the job. Whereas, the task oriented approach would concentrate more on the specific tasks, the tools required to perform those tasks, the sequence of tasks. and maybe any associated performance related matters. So, after careful consideration of these aspects job analysis may be done to gain a comprehensive understanding of the job and its requirements, enabling them to make informed decisions regarding recruitment, training, selection, development, etcetera. But here, since our major concern is to collect the information related to training, so task analysis would definitely provide us a comprehensive view of what we are looking at. Now, moving on you know to the next aspect of training need analysis, the individual analysis. Now, what is individual analysis? Individual analysis analyzes how well the individual employee is doing the job and determines which employee needs training and what kind of training is needed by that individual. So, Individual analysis focuses on assessing the performance of individual employees within the organization and thereafter determines their strengths, their weaknesses, their training needs and then they then by means of doing such kind of exercise, the appropriate and very uh, customized training related programs may be designed for several groups. For example, in an organization, there might be a situation wherein the individual is not performing well in training, you know, in um, sales. So, there may be two reasons why the sales are not happening. One of the reasons could be the fact that the individuals are not having adequate sales skills. And another reason in this context could be something related to lack of product knowledge. So, both of the things would ultimately attribute towards or would uh, uh, finally, contribute towards the lower performance of the individuals, but at the outset it is the important thing to be addressed and it is important to see that what does an individual actually lack in, does he lack in? the product knowledge or does it lack in some kind of interpersonal skills. So, there are few things that we have to actually look at, the very first thing being the performance evaluation. So, performance evaluation is about evaluating or assessing the performance of an individual with respect to a particular 
job. So, it identifies the weaknesses of an individual, the strengths of an individual and tries to determine the various areas of improvement. So, it involves evaluating various aspects of employees work such as job knowledge, skills, abilities, communication, teamwork, collaboration skills, productivity, adherence to companies, policies, etc. Now, it may be related to identifying the weaknesses I, as I mentioned. So, performance evaluation can help us identify which particular area is an individual lacking. So, we have to be very, very careful in determining the specific areas of specific individuals that need to be addressed because if they are not taken care of, they may lead to several repercussions which would again be very, very counterproductive for the organization's health. So, it is about determining the training needs. So, when we see determining training needs, when we say uh, uh, you know determining the training needs, based on the findings of the performance evaluation, training needs can be understood. Right, and training programs can, can be then designed to develop or enhance the knowledge, skills and competencies which are required to be formed uh, in order to do a particular job in an appropriate manner. So, this is about performance evaluation. Next, we move to performance problems. Now, when we talk about performance problems, what do they mean? Performance problems would mean some problems related to the performance of an individual, the way in which he takes up his operations. For example, there may, may be situations when the individual is not able to be as productive as an average worker should be. There are cases of absenteeism, there are uh, some you know some uh, issues related to accidents, grievances, waste, product quality, downtime, repair, equipment utilization, customer complaints, etc. So, these issues need to be addressed in a wise manner. Let me take an example of a female whose name was Sara. So, she worked as a customer representative, customer service representative in a telecommunication company. During her performance evaluation, it was noted that she was very good at, she excelled in handling some routine nature of works. For example, customer inquiries, she was very good at handling the customer inquiries, she was very good at handling uh, the uh, mechanism related to escalation of the complaints in an effective manner. And while doing this individual analysis, they could figure out that she had certain weak points also or there were certain weak weaknesses where her uh, performance discrepancies were very much visible. So, there was this employee Sara uh, who was working as a customer, who was working at a customer service as a customer service representative in a tele telecommunication company. So, during her performance evaluation, it was found that she was excellent in handling routine customer related inquiries, but she was struggling with certain issues related to escalating the customer complaints effectively. So, as a part of individual analysis, the supervisors of Sara, the supervisor identified it as her weakness and recommended the targeted training on conflict resolution and de-escalation technique to improve her performance and handling the challenging customer interactions. So, this exercise of individual analysis by means of studying her weaknesses and her areas of excellence really help the organization in pinpointing what can be leveraged and what need immediate attention. 
So, this was about uh, Sarah's story. Now, we move to the various kinds of uh, problems which might arise and there can be several kinds of you know performance problems which may arise in the organizations pertaining to productivity, absenteeism, training, accidents, grievances, waste, downtime as I just mentioned. So, all these things have to be taken care of and they have to be maintained in a very uh, good manner. Now, we move to the aspect of individual analysis as in how can we really conduct the individual analysis, what all interventions can be used and how uh, you know organizations can gain insight in the performance of their employees by doing appropriate individual analysis and uh, what can be the methods that can be used for doing the individual analysis. So, when it comes to doing the individual analysis, the first method is observation method. This method involves directly observing an individual's behavior and uh, outcomes or result of the behavior of an individual. So, observations can provide very, very fresh insights into how an individual is performing the tasks and uh, what is his perform performance level, what is his proficiency level and also understanding the areas of improvement. So, this can be one way the direct observation method can be one method to do the individual analysis. Then we have something called as the interview method. So, when it comes to interview method, the use of interviews can be made in order to conduct the need analysis for the individuals and it is something which is strongly urged. So, the primary value of interview guides is that they ensure the same type of data from all sources. This allows you to determine whether a piece of information is one person's opinion or part of a widespread perception about an individual. Since it is, uh, it may be subjected to certain kind of uh, biases also. So, when we are collecting the data from various sources and then we are trying to uh, create a perception of an individual and we, we try to do an overview of widespread perception of an individual that helps us in gaining an insight into the individual better. So, since the interview guide forces you to ask each worker on a number of predetermined questions, you must select those questions that are essential to what you are trying to learn. Uh, so, interviews entail structured conversation with the employees, the managers, the supervisors, the subject matter expert to gather a lot of information related to the job. And interviews also provide you with adequate opportunities for employees to express their perspectives. So, employees perspectives about the job uh, would and the self assessments are the ones which can really be fetched by means of the interview methods. Uh, an example in this context could be a training manager conducts interviews with its employees to understand their learning preferences areas of interest for skills development and perceived challenges in performing the job tasks effectively. So, this way you could understand what are the learning preferences of the people and uh, by doing the in depth analysis he could even figure out what learning style uh, would be preferred by the individual and therefore, this kind of practice of understanding and identifying the various uh, issues pertaining to the individuals and uh, understanding what suits an individual the most help the trainer to develop the entire set of training in an appropriate manner and uh, was able to then successfully uh, make the most of it. Now, next is the questionnaire. So, question is a sort of interview on paper. You create your own questions, you write them down and then you ask people about the uh, questions then maybe you mail them or you give them uh, all those things and await their responses. So, the key advantage of a questionnaire is that you can include every person from whom you want input. Employees can complete the questionnaire when and where they choose and they I mean it is completely their discretion also. So, some of the data related to job, 
such as job knowledge, skills, competencies, the training preferences of the individuals, the learning preferences of the individuals, uh, whether they would like to go for uh, some kind of uh, comprehensive training programs or th would they like to go for the uh, asynchronous mode of learning or synchronous mode of learning can all be learnt by means of these kinds of questionnaires. An example in context of questionnaire could be employees complete a questionnaire rating their proficiency level in various software applications. So, this would help the organization gather the data related to the several employees who are working in the organization and then this particular activity would help them chalk out which employees to target for giving the training related to software at the grassroots level and which all employees are required to be given the training just to hone up and brush up their skills. So, such kind of things can really be very, very in important and instrumental for the overall uh, understanding of the training needs of the individuals. Then is uh, about job description. So, I think we have already covered a lot of job description, I would not repeat it again. Uh, then is about difficulty analysis. So, when it comes to difficulty analysis, uh, this is something which focuses attention on enumerating the numerous activities. So, the individuals may be asked to create a log of various activities which are uh, you know providing or which are which are giving them uh, difficulty at some point of time or the other. So, difficulty analysis establishes uh, which of the duties cause the problem the greatest amounts of troubles. So, once they are able to write down their pain areas, once they uh, write down the pain areas, they, they tell about the, uh, the maximum amount of trouble is being caused at what point and uh, for which particular task which they are performing. So, this particular thing can help them develop better training to increase the productivity of the individuals. So, this is an excellent exercise to understand the pain areas of people. For this, for this uh, you know, uh, a good difficulty analysis can give you n number of advantages. For example, it enables a need analyst to weigh certain aspects of training in relationship to the expected difficulty that the worker is facing in coping those duties. So, what one person might be find, finding difficult to do may not necessarily be the pain area of the other individual also. So, well thought out difficulty analysis will provide the training program with an abundance of role playing material and situations. Then is about problem solving conferences. Another time tested technique for gathering need analysis material from the employees is to conduct periodic problem solving conferences, which may take the form of or be a part of the plan of new product, task or technology. So, such kind of uh, you know problem solving conferences can be conducted every now and then to understand the pain areas and also to solve the problems. So, this outside sponsorship can, has a tendency of letting the workers express their feelings more about their organization and the session can be then geared to the training needs. Then is about appraisal reviews. The performance appraisal that happens in the organization has to be seen very, very carefully and during the periodic counseling performance interviews an employee should be questioned regarding the duties and training of the worker. So, Again, when we are uh, reviewing the performance of an individual, we will get to know about the performance discrepancy areas and uh, the necessary steps may be taken by the organizations to take a note of such things. Then is about drive pattern identity. So, when we talk about need drive pattern identity, it is important for us to understand that uh, need drive of different people vary. So, what motivates people to work? and what puts them to work is an important concern to be addressed. Uh, now, let me take you through a small case here which is about training need assessment at XYZ Limited. So, XYZ Limited is a multinational company operating in technology sector with its various offices across different regions. The company is committed to maintaining a skilled workforce to stay competitive in the rapidly evolving industry. Now, the human resources department has been tasked with conducting a training need assessment. Now, this was 
done with the help of some key players. Now, who are the key players? The HR manager, the departmental managers, the employees. They were used as key players for this. And the process which they followed to conduct the training needed assessment was stakeholders consultation. Then a lot of employee surveys were done. The online surveys were distributed to all employees to gather feedback on the training needs and preferences. And then focus group discussions of employees from various departments were conducted to delve deeper into the specific training needs identified. Skill gap analysis was done to figure out the performance discrepancy areas and the uh, training plan development was done based on the findings of the need assessment. So the HR team develops a comprehensive uh, training program outlining the specific courses, workshops and development programs that will address the identified skill gaps. This, these were the outcomes of uh, training need assessments. First one being tailored training programs to the employees, improved employee engagement and enhanced organizational performance. Now, now the question which arises is who conducts training need analysis and why? It can be an in-house trainer who can conduct training need analysis and uh, it can be an outsider also. So we may hire a consultant to do it or we may do it all on our own. And the information concerning any of the various issues may be addressed as a part of it. For example, the performance problems, the anticipated introduction of new system, technology, etc. and the desire by the organization to benefit from a perceived opportunity. So these are some of the things uh, which are essentially required and these can really help. Now next we come to an important aspect which is called as approaches to training need analysis. We have two ways to address it. One being the proactive training need analysis and another is reactive training need analysis. So when the training need analysis happens prior to any problem happening, that's called as proactive training need analysis wherein the organization is very proactive in taking the necessary steps to understanding the training needs of the people. Another way can be reactive training need analysis. For example, if some incidents happens or if there is some kind of problem which arises because of which the organization thinks of conducting the training need analysis, that's called as reactive training need analysis. So with this, we just like to conclude and I would just like to summarize what all has been learned so far. So in today's lecture, we try to touch upon several aspects related to need assessments and several aspects of uh, organizational analysis, task analysis, job analysis and individual dis, uh, analysis were discussed. With this, I would like to thank you all.